challenging moments in life are something which people face right now, especially during the times we are in right now. And sometimes you don't know what to do. Sometimes you are in a position where you say, well, I really can't change things how they are. And maybe this is just how life goes. And then there are people who have a completely different story. And one of them is the expert we invited right now, international keynote speaker, London Times number one best-selling author, and former Memory World Champion. Hello and welcome, David Thomas. Hello. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time, and I'm going to get straight into it. Um, you are a Memory World Champion. Um, okay, Memory World Champion coming from the UK. First question I'm going to ask you, what's your background? Is it Oxford? Is it Cambridge? Where, where, <laughs> where do you come from? Because normally when we see people who compete in this, these kind of competitions normally have a quite posh background when they are really successful. Yeah, well, of course, when, when you're looking for the, the highest level of education, the three that you think of is Oxford, Cambridge and Halifax. Which yeah. is obviously, obviously where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there was one surprising bit in there, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, now I'm from Halifax, and no, my background is that I didn't do very well at school. I, I had a troubled background, to be fair, difficult childhood, and I got expelled at 16. And I went out there into the big wide world. I ended up working in a factory for a pound an hour. And eventually, at the age of 20, got in the fire service because that's, that was the best job a guy like me could do. With, with, I, I got a criminal conviction at 16, uh, petty theft, mm -hmm. petty crime, at the age of 16, juvenile criminal conviction. So as I was growing, as I was moving forward in life, the only jobs I could get were factory or very low level office work. But at the age of 20, I joined the fire service, which changed, changed things around for me considerably. And it was whilst being a firefighter and struggling to pass my fire service exams because I wasn't very academic that I got involved in memory and found that I could do it very well. Okay, so I mean, from from from, from finding out I, I can do it very well to becoming the world champion, it's a bit of a path. Uh, how did you how did you make that happen? Because especially when you say you had limited means, um, it also means you had limited financial means. Probably, I, I have to assume then. Um, how do you make it from being quite good at it to, to world champion? How, how did that happen? Well, I've got to say, I must confess, you are, you, yeah, I was never world champion. I was a Guinness record breaker. Oh, okay. Okay, and, yeah. and I came third in the world. But the, the path was very, very simple. And it's been a metaphor for everything that I've done ever since. I think people do overcomplicate things, that you need this, you need that. And actually, it was no more complicated than I saw a guy on TV Memorize a pack of playing cards. And I was like, Jesus, that's brilliant. I've got to learn how to do that. Guys would like it at work. And you know what? I might be able to learn how to, I might learn something I can um, help me pass my exams. Bought this guy's book and literally six pounds that saved my life, $10. <laughs> I, I, I bought the book. I, it was just chocker. It was, it was just one strategy after another. There was no motivation. There was no fluffy stuff that you and I know appears in quite a lot of books, you know, self-development books. It was like, if you want to learn a list, do this. If you want to learn numbers, do this. If you want to learn names, do this. And I practiced it. And I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I found I was good. And th But the thing that was really cool is that the more I practiced, the better I got. And I think a lot of us are limited by what we think we can achieve. And I'm not one of those speakers who turns around and says, oh, believe it and you can achieve it. If that was true, I'd be married to Angelina Jolie and playing for Man U. It's not, <laughs> as, simple as, it's not as simple as that, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, the fact is, but with memory, actually, it is. <laughs> the more you practice it, the better you get. Eight months after buying the book, I went to the World Memory Championships and came forth. And one week, that was the weekend that changed my life. On, on a Friday, it was a hobby in my back bedroom. On the Monday, I'm getting read by a million people in the Times. Mm. It's a strategy. The, great, the great news is, Mike, uh, Niels, is it was strategy, technique, a huge amount of practice, and that was it. Okay, so when, when we go especially to the motivational part of it, so you made it there. Um, some people will now say, okay, look, David, um, this is how the cards were dealt in my life. Um, struggling household, da 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 um, Where do I even start? I'm struggling. Some people might say, I'm struggling financially right now because maybe I lost my job to the situation. I don't see any job on the horizon. Um, 
how do I just move forward to any kind of, let's say, reasonable and stable life again? When people say that to me, I have zero sympathy. And I'll tell you why. You okay. can start a business, you can start a business for free tonight. You take the knowledge that's inside your head, sit and write a course, bang it up on the internet, start and just start advertising it on social media or whatever. And you, you there is almost no barrier to entry for success at some reasonable level. If there's something you don't know, just go and find a video on it. Just put it into YouTube. Yeah, you're going to find a lot of crap. But trust me, if, you've, if you're mind for the gold, you'll find a video that will teach you almost everything you need to know. We have almost, and I, I don't like using absolute, so I will say we've got almost access to anything, almost mm. any information that we want. And we have... The, you know, the, the, the cost of putting a business together has dropped to zero. Not, not maybe not absolutely zero, but really not far off. Mm. You know, you, you, you put together a great video on something that you know for an hour, teaching something, stick it up on YouTube, hide the link, just advertise it on your social media feed. Somebody will give you 20 quid and you're off and running. Just find ways to, you know, go out there and find a, a blog that is, that's got a good readership of your target audience. Tell them that you know some stuff and just give them a little article. They'll publish it for free. You can get out there and do stuff for free. Um, mm. the, the, difference, the only thing that stops people is basic motivation and work ethic. Yeah. So now, of course, we come to the next problem that people will tell you, okay, um, in theory, all okay. But when I run my own business, I have to do like marketing and sales. And then people will say, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not really extrovert. I have no clue about marketing. So how, how will I ever find, find people who, who constantly and repeatedly pay me reasonably well to do what I do? Well, I mean, there's two sides to that. One is, I think you can learn to do almost anything to a good enough level. You may not necessarily be salesman of the year, but you can learn how to sell. You can learn how to put together a sales letter. You can learn how to, to present. If, if presenting is, you know, like we're doing now, if, you, if your presentation skills are not up to scratch, just go and learn how to do it and practice. Get yourself down to the local Rotary Club and, you know, some, you know, a business networking. Just stand up, present what it is that you do, get some, you know, get some practice at presenting. And... You can kind of do most things at a reasonable level. And if you need some help, go out there and do it. I mean, we just had a bit of branding done and we went on to Fiverr and it cost 30 quid to get a logo and, you know, some other stuff. It, do, it doesn't, you know, if you can't do it, find somebody else who can. And, and going back to what I said, yeah, you don't need any investment. Sometimes you need a few quid to put here and, here and there. But the cost of finding this stuff has dropped like a stone. I started in 90, 1998 as a commercial professional speaker. And I had to go out and get an eight page brochure done. The cost of the design and the printing alone was just horrific. And mm. nowadays it's, it's free. You can do it. You know, you can get images off the internet for free. You can get gifts for free. You can get audio, put together something really nice and good looking and just get a few tips. Go on and find a good video on how to put together a sales letter, how to put together a, a one page marketing um, brochure and then just follow those simple rules and it comes down to this if the quality of the content that you have is good enough people will buy mm. so of course some people might now think uh okay that that is your path um when they now struggle because they say i i don't really have the business skills people think they need so for example you might need an accountant and you don't even know where to get an accountancy or whatever and p many people just have the fear of taking the risk to go self-employed. Do you really think that anyone can start a business or do you think that some people are really better off being employed somewhere? <laughs> That's a big question. That's a big question. I think yeah. when it comes back to the fear, yeah, we all, we all have a bit of fear. We all wake up in the morning with a bit of a feeling of, you know, in the pit of our stomach that today's the day we're never going to, you know, we're never going to get another speaking gig, you know, like we're in that business. But I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I think you have to work it out for yourself. If, if, you, if you are the kind of person who will wake up at two o'clock every morning, just panic into high heaven that you're never going to get another piece of work, you're never going to earn another penny, then you need to be employed. And I think you instinctively know that. But if, yeah. if you do feel that you are prepared to accept a bit of risk and a little bit of fear, 
and you can overcome that enough to make, to to produce the work. F- fear is you know th- there's two types of stress. There's you stress e u s t r e w s and there's distress. Distress is what freezes most people. They can't work and really struggle moving forward. You stress is a is a driver. So with me and Karen, my partner Karen and Karen and I, we work together. For her, you know, when things start to build, the distress kicks in. So I manage that because I'm with her and I'm we're we're in the business together. Me, mm-hmm. everything is everything is you stress. I'm excited by everything, and I'm not going to completely crash and burn the business just on a, on a, and re- put it all on red. That's not what I'm going to do. But at the same time, you have to examine who you are, and if you feel that you want to have a go, then and then minimize the risk. Run it, along, run it alongside something else. I mean, think about athletes. They didn't all just leave school at 16 and going to be, most of them, going to be a full-time professional athlete. Quite a lot probably had to go and get jobs and then go down the running track on the night. You do what, it's the work ethic that's a killer. Do mm. your job, earn the cash, get your money in the bank, do what you need to do, come home, six o'clock, open up your laptop, do a second business. Go to bed at 11 o'clock, get up at six o'clock, do it all again. That's, that's all it is. And that's what I did back in the day, 98. I was an operational firefighter. And I, I started speaking in Feb 97, but it was January 2000 before I went full time. So I spent just short of four years being a speaker whilst being an operational firefighter with a partner and two kids. I mean, that is very good advice. And when I, when I look at your website, there, there's a quote from a quite well-known post. Well, quite well-known. It says, David Thomas has earned his place in history for his superior mind, said by Oprah Winfrey. How did you get the attention of Oprah Winfrey? Because that's where basically every motivational, inspirational speaker wants to be, to, to, to be mentioned by that person. How, how did that happen? I emailed the show. Excuse me? I emailed the show and said, can I come on? And they said, yes. That is the whole story. You emailed the show and they said, yeah, come here. Okay. I, I went to, in, in 2002, I, mean, I, I, email, I, went on, I went on Oprah.com. They had a, an email for inquiries. So the contacts, I emailed them. I said, my name's Dave. I've done a Guinness record, 22,500 digits of pi, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to come on the show. I heard nothing for 18 months. Then I got an email off an assistant producer and they said, you know, you sent us an email. We've had you on file. And we're doing a show on Record Breakers. Have you got any footage? So I saw a phone number at the bottom. So I phoned them up straight away and I said, you just sent me a phone number. Uh, Sorry, an email. And they said, yeah. And I went, well, you want some footage of me doing my Guinness record? And he said, yeah, have you got some? I said, better than that, I could come on the show. And she laughed down the phone. She went, you know, this is Oprah. Goes out to like 100 million people. (laughs) And and I says, yeah, but honestly, trust me, I'm bloody brilliant on TV. And she went, yeah, of course you are. And I said, she said, I need some foot. I need some, you know, I'm, I'm nothing if short of, you know, big bollocks. And she just went, and she went, well, have you got some footage? I said, yes. She said, it's got to be on the BBC. No word of a lie. She said, that's currency worldwide. BBC is considered the best TV in the world. So I had a, I had a, a video cassette, VHS, because this is 2002. Yeah. Um, and, and I was... And I said, uh, I've got this VHS cassette of me appearing on the kids' show called Blue Peter, but it was live. I memorized 200 kids' names. It was an amazing show. She went, I want that. So I met a guy on a Sunday morning at 8 a.m. in a Halifax car park in a hotel, and he had a, in a white van, gave him this VHS cassette, cassette, and 18 hours later, I got a phone call and said, if you can be here on Wednesday, you can go on the show. I think that is the best advice for just giving it a go and trying it is probably the best idea and way better than hesitating until you wait for the moment where everything seems to be perfect because that moment most likely will never happen. So just get started. So when, when people are now listening to this and think about, wow, this is mind blowing, I might give it a go. What are David Thomas top three tips when uh, people want to change their life now and want to start their own business? David Thomas top three tips. Well, first of all, there's never a good time to start. If you wait for a good time, it will never arrive. Number one, just do it now. Whatever it is, just down to tools, put aside some time and have a go. Number two, and you and I talk about this, and one thing I've learned from you, Niels, you know, one of the things that you're just awesome at and we joke about every time we chat is structure is king. 
plan yeah. and process. You know, just plan and get the right processes in place. Okay. Because otherwise, you know, if you, I, I went off like a blunderbuss, which is a very old fashioned gun, which just blew shot out everywhere. And that's what I did. And it kind of got me where I am, but it was a bad strategy. If you're more focused and you become more laser like, then you will get a lot further forward. And the last thing is just understand you're a long time dead. <laughs> Just, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite phrases. I, I don't believe in um, religion. I'm not spiritual. I don't mm. believe in pixies in a garden shed. I, you know, I'm a long time dead. I've got to do it now. Yeah. And not at some, you know, in, you know in, imprecise point in the future when all the sun, moon and stars align. Crack on because, you know, honestly, six months after you're dead, nobody will remember your name. Do it now. Yeah. I think these are perfect final words for this interview. Of course, I'm going to put your contact data in the show notes of this podcast so people can get in touch with you directly or, which I would highly recommend, book you as a speaker because I saw you speak multiple times. And it is just, as you say, bloody brilliant because that's what it is. And for this interview, there's only one thing for me left to say. David, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure, Niels. Thanks for asking me.